Hello, everybody. Welcome to Clash of the Correspondents. My name's James, and today we're joined by two of our correspondents ahead of Game Week 24. They both have... It's not Game Week 24, is it? It's Game Week 25, you muppet. <laughs> One has a likely double in Game Week 26. One has a double Game Week now. Firstly, let me introduce you to Bradley Parker at Parker underscore Bradley on Twitter, our Wolverhampton Wanderers correspondent. How are you, Bradley? I'm right, James. Thank you. Are you? Good man. Yeah, good. Thank you. And let me introduce you to FPL tactician Andy Martin, our Leeds United correspondent. How are you, Andy? Very well, James. Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Brilliant. Can't good. wait. Good man. Bradley, I've got to start with you. This is going to be shit for the audio listeners. But for anybody who's ever listened on YouTube or watched on YouTube before, I want to know where your, <laughs> your bright orange and gold walls have gone in your room. Where have they gone and why have they gone? For a change of book. That's border. Do you just get sick of Wolves? Because it looks like a Leeds United room now, a little bit. Does it? It's like a little navy, bit, yeah. It's like a navy grey blue colour. Well, yeah, a nice Spurs, de- a nice Spurs away. <laughs> a nice depressing colour. Have Wolves <laughs> been depressing you this year, mate? Yeah. Why? Set up from the beginning of games is poor. The intent at the start of the game. Kills your kills this, your enthusiasm. This was a problem last year, right? We're sitting here 12 months ago and we're going, Wolves, so much better in the second halves. All the time, repetitive theme. And it feels like from the outside, your main players got injured and things have gone backwards. That, is it as simple as that? Uh, no. I think there's some, something behind the scenes so sometimes. It just seems off. Like last season was like second half FC, but it felt like that was part of the design. This time, it just feels like they're just lethargic and just have to like work themselves into the game. I mean, we are never scored the first goal, so we're asking not to even win in the top flight. If you're not scoring the first goal, I think we've only scored the first goal in last time was. I can't even tell you. I can't even remember the last Goes time we scored check. the first goal. Why is that? Because to be honest, we joked about it last year about is it intentional that Wolves are trying to blister teams in the second half on the counter-attack and stuff? But I I agree with you that the change of formation, which has partly been abandoned from... I don't seem to know now from game to game whether you're going to play a back four or a a back five. Has he confused himself a little bit, Nuno, with what he's trying to do? Yeah, I don't know why. the In the summer, he said he wanted to evolve the team changed to a back four, but didn't recruit any players to play in that system. That was the biggest mistake possible. We still uh, have the same... I mean, we've still got the same players near enough and a bunch of kids. Last He's time played. last time you scored first, Bradley, just having a look here, was... Oh, my God, it is actually literally it's ages ago. I think it's yeah, at Arsenal game, game week 10. That can't when Raul got right. injured. That's unbelievable. Apart from the FA Cup matches, yeah. So genuinely, 14 game weeks you haven't scored the first goal. That can't be right. So that's, it that's feels got, right. That's, it feels that's, right. That's, that's got to be immense. I mean, you've won games in that time. Chelsea at home, Arsenal at home. Um, but that's got to be a mentality thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's ne- it feels negative from the start of the match. Like against Southampton recently, the, that first half was absolutely atrocious. It was lucky it wasn't more the way they played. They get away with it sometimes. So we know the secret for you, Andy, going to Molyneux on Friday. You don't score and you come away with a point now, do you, wouldn't it? Yeah, fine. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't score, they won't score. <laughs> to be honest, I'm just loving life mid-table. So we're, we're the Wolves sat, sat in mid-table. I'm happy enough. So go, go and get another draw, another point in the on the board happy days in in this fixture was quite early in the season I mean, it was around about game week five or six they massively frustrated you Andy and it felt it almost felt like the first template game of do you know what set up with a flat back five against Leeds they're going to struggle a bit is that a, a concern going into this one yeah it really is like I've said it before Wolves was a horrible game for us they just sat sat as a bank as a bank of five at the back and just didn't come out and just didn't do anything and just sat there. Defended easily against Bamford. Bolly and Cody, I didn't give them a sniff all game. We were trying to, we had majority of possession yet again, but we just pass in, pass and pass in because they got a bank of five and then three probably defensive mids as well. 
it was just yeah, and they got us on their one attack. I think is is that is that the worst for you when you come up with a block essentially? Yeah, is, is that the worst game? Because we identified kind of after this game and I think the Leicester game, the four one, that most teams should go against you and go with a flat five. But there's a lot of teams more recently have had success by kind of punching back against you a bit in, in fours, actually. Yeah, I mean, there has, I mean, Sunday was a prime example of a team coming at us rather than like, oh, OK, it's Leeds, sit off them. But Arsenal pressed us high and it was really damaging on, on Sunday. The first half was, was horrible to watch. Um, yeah, it, it was exposed. I mean, that it, it kind of highlighted a one too many players missing. Is it as simple as Calvin Phillips missing? Is so brutal. Well, I was I was so shocked on on Sunday. So you, Phillips is kind of fifty fifty where he's going to start or not. And I was thinking, okay, if he doesn't make it, Shackleton will come in. It'd be a straight swap because Ailing has been doing well again down the right. Stroik has actually settled back into centre half quite well with Cooper the last few games. And thinking, right, don't mess that up. Get Shackleton in for Phillips, whether that puts Dallas as CDM or Click go back at CDM, or even Shackleton can play there, but keep the back four the same. So when he decided to tinker, I was just like, oh, why put Ailing back at centre half and lose that out ball? Because Ailing's been so good at receiving the ball from Meslier, going down the right side, fine. And just changing it up with Strook, he gets lost in games at CDM. We're just not performing when he's in that position. No, it's not where it's a few occasions. The, the Villa 3 0 win sticks out like a sore thumb in terms of right, get that changed quickly. I mean, we removed him after about 20 minutes. 20 game, minutes, yeah. 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 Um, Bielsa spoke after the Arsenal game about saying, kind of blaming himself for not preparing properly. Is, is there a part over that where this has been overfought? And the, I mean, a simplistic thing to me, saying drop click back in a bit deeper and possibly mm. just play Roberts uh, with yeah. Dallas in a higher position seems, whereas. The one change led to you changing sort of three players, if that makes it's, sense. It's, it's crazy. I mean, the way we should set up, how we normally set up is like we were, as I said before, we're a well-oiled machine. And Phillips makes such a big difference because he's someone who will spit the centre-backs, collect the ball off Meslier, or if he's being man-marked and someone's following Phillips, it opens up space for another out ball and it's just easy to get out. You take that away and try and tinker it so much. It's just, yeah, it wasn't great to watch, but... I'm not going to sit here and criticise Bielsa because <laughs> um, what he's done is amazing. And I'm happy it, to be it, He's rubbish, isn't he? He's overrated. It's nonsense. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're naive, <laughs> fragile, all those things. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you wish you could go back six, seven years to League One and all that, Andy. You must be so gutted. Oh, man. The, the dark years. I mean, 20 years of painful. Shit, yeah, yeah, painful. painful. Um, so. Andy raises a good point, Bradley, about not looking forward to playing you. I would bet that if I spoke to nearly every correspondent, they'd still say, don't want to play Wolves. I don't know I, 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 I bet that's still the case. Because you just you just know it's a tough game, mate. Is he? No, I don't. Well, you tell me. that Has it changed I'd... from that perspective? Because even looking at them results going, you haven't scored first in a game for 14 game weeks or so. Still, there's plenty. There's a few in there you've won. There's loads in there that you've drawn and stuff. So the, the reverse from saying, okay, the standards don't seem quite as good as last year. There is obviously some sort of never say die attitude in there. The ability to recover from bad positions over and over again. I think it's just the way we perform. I think we just give ourselves that much to do a lot of the time. I mean, the way the chain. I don't. The way the change at Southampton at half time just makes me question why it doesn't start like that. The tactical change for Neto and Traore to swap sides really worked because we asked them to do the God's work half the time with Deep Neves and Moutinho would sit. They have to run like 30 yards up the pitch to even get close to any of the strikers we play. But when they was coming infield, it was creating far more problems. And we ended up having a lot more pressure in their half of the pitch. So I'm hoping that the start like that again against Leeds, because we know Leeds are going to bomb at us. And Neto and Traore will cause a lot of... If we let them stay back and cheat a little bit and stay forward, it could cause a lot of big problems there did, for once. Does so that that Andy, depends on the start. I, yeah, I, just, I, just don't think you, I just don't think you're brave enough to do that, really. No. I don't think you'll put Neto and Traore it. high and leave, it up, leave them up there to cause us problems. It would just be us back to, oh, thank goodness, we can pass it around in the back a bit, get some possession. Yeah. 
and build from there. Again, that's how I see the game going. I don't see Nuno going, okay, do what Arsenal did. No, I can't see it. No, you got to do it. How, how would that okay. work, Andy? I'm, I'm just trying to think here. So what happens quite a lot with Wolves is you say you've got Neto left, Traore right. It kind of becomes a 5-4-1 without the ball. So in your man-to-man system, Alioski goes with Traore. Uh, let's just assume Ailing is back to right back and goes with Neto, just hypothetically. If, if they then become inverted and go into central areas, do they just go with because they think, well, perhaps Johnny and Samedo won't then overlap down the sides? Or is there a case of leaving them to go into those areas and it will be what it will be? Because one of the main problems you had on Sunday was Arsenal just pulled you all over the place yeah. following runners. Yeah. Um, if if, the, if Nuno decide to do that, I just think we'll, we'll go back to them. I just think, OK, you're doing that. We'll still get Ali Alioski and Ailing high, and kind of like leave them there. If you want this kind of game, we'll just go for it. Then that's what. If, if they decide to do that, I think we'll try to to hurt them and just try and force them back. And is that how you see it, fullback wise, Alioski and and Ailing? I know probably the ref, the preferred when everyone is fit is probably Dallas left back, isn't it? Probably. Yeah, it's it's look, like, like we haven't had that this season at all, and that's still what I'm hoping for. Eventually, to have. I don't think Alioski is good enough to play at this standard. He, he, he kind of goes missing. He just gets a bit lost and a bit, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not too keen. I mean, he's great, great character. But at this level, it's not something he needs. So I'd, I'd much rather prefer Dallas and Ailing because I can see how well they can do it fullback. It was a game about we... a month ago where you tweeted afterwards, we found out there's a lot of players. I think it might have been after the Brighton game, maybe. You said there was a lot of players you'd, you'd begun to realise weren't up to Premier League standard. Does he, does he, Alioski, and people like Strack? Is, is that who you're referring to then, people like that? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, even Click recently, I've been thinking he's not quite at it, he's not quite sharp enough. So I think there's, there's kind of three or four changes that we could make to make us better. But that's because perhaps we haven't had a centre back, but a good centre back fit for a while. We've had Cooper in there, who's also been injured. But then to have Lorente and Karp have kind of been our main two signings. What, not, what not impacts will, will, will they make? I mean, I know you've seen very little, particularly of Lorente. What is eventually the best pair in there at centre back? I think it would be Cock and Lorente. I mean, Cooper's our captain. But again, I don't think he's particularly at this level. Like, he's a good defender and I love him. My dog's named after him. But <laughs> Do you love your dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah <I> do. <laughs> just checking. Yeah, but um, yeah, I just I I, I prefer to see Cock and Lorenzo, and just because I think they're composed and good defenders. They're, they're they're two defenders that can comfortable with the ball and actually get on the ball and bring it out, which is what we want to progress up the pitch. At the moment, with with Cooper, Alioski, Ailing to go centre back, they kind of it's a bit kind of all over the place and kind of okay, where do we go? What do we do? And it's just. Because you get hassled so much in the Premier League, if teams come on to us like a press, it's like Arsenal. There's Lier as well. He's young, so he's learning still, but it just becomes very messy if, if it gets like that. So I got only Cock and Lorente are internationals and, and decent standards. So. Yeah, Cooper seems to have one game where I think, oh, yeah, like the Palace game. I thought he, I don't know if it's because it's Palace, but I thought he really it's stood Palace, out and yeah. great. Yeah, but it's Palace, they sit off. I know. So, like, easy, yeah, fine. But yeah, when you get, get flustered, when you get flustered with teams that press, you know, I don't know, it's not good enough, really. OK. Uh, Bradley, system, we should talk about it because we had this change to the back four for quite a while and then it changed back and then it changed back again. What, what, what do you want? What do you think most of the fans want? Um, and what do you think Nuno's going to do, if you can answer that in three different parts? I think he's going to stay with three till the end of this season. Okay. And I think serious conversations have to be had in the summer. If he really wants to say what he does, evolve the, the team to be more possession-based and change to a back four, then they're going to have to have a serious discussion about Conor Cody's future. Do we sell him now when he's got high value, England international? Because we saw him now playing a four for a pro- prolonged period of time. And I don't think really we'd get away with it at the top level. Well, why why does game. he not work in a four then? Why, why is it... Why, I think a lot of people think that. Why is it so different? Because he's not... Because he's exposed one on one. Do you remember the Chelsea match last season? I think I said to you, if you the sit five, on two. Connor, so if you sit on Connor Cody, you can get a lot of results. And Tammy Abraham pulled his pants down in that match. Proper 
rinsed him. If he gets if, if he can get isolated one on one, he struggles. And that and that just gets highlighted more in a back four, a back four. Especially when he's got to cover the full back positions as well if he wants us to go forward. Generally, it doesn't happen though, does it? Because you're normally only playing against one forward and he lets the other two go and attack it. And he obviously he really does play like an old fashioned sweeper in a five. He goes so much deeper than the others. Whereas obviously in a four, you have to be more conscious about offside lines, balls over the top, yeah. getting pulled out into fullback areas where maybe he's not great in go. the air as well. That's another problem. Are you to be honest, you'd know that better than me. I'm just thinking when he actually went forward for set pieces for England, he actually looked like a threat. And for, for a long time, many of us have wondered why he didn't for you. At least he's had some shots this year, mate. <laughs> it was that West Brom game with the, oh, just an absolute mare. Any aerial ball in the box. It mate, all I, I, I really wasn't going to bring up the West Brom game, mate. The first thing I was going to say to you about it is you should listen to Gemma Eno on last week's COTC. Um, she managed to get a dig in, but she's not, listen, Things it's could be worse, very right? much though, has he? I'm still doing Devon. <laughs> you, I mean, exactly. You you could be in their position, right? Um, and I know you you'd said to us a few weeks ago that you were genuinely concerned that you were like prior to the Arsenal game, which you won, that you were going to get sucked into a dog fight. Isn't that yeah, yeah, no now, teams. No, they've evened it out. But I've heard that before with Wolves. They're too good to get down in the Championship. No, they are. Nobody's too good. Not when you're stuck in the mire. I was going to say, I'd never heard it previously in the Premier League, mate, because every time no. it came up, it seemed to disappear <laughs> quite quickly until this team came we were, um We were with you in League One, weren't we? Yeah. Years ago. <laughs> Same time. Well, clash of the EFL correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> League One special. Dark times. That. The ghosts of the past. Yeah. It's it, it's interesting though to have you two together because you are both big clubs and you've both obviously been in in that position. And obviously, Some Andy, times. your team was was obviously out the top flight for a long time, but has then got the the more recent history of league title in 1992, Champions League semi final in 2001. Mm. Whereas yours, Bradley, hasn't got that. Is one of is one of the problems for you as a football club is we know the owners have got a little bit of cash and they're they're pushing for that next level, and at the moment you can't really get there. Is, is that part of what this whole back four thing was about? I mean, from the outsider's perspective, it was a bit sickening, obviously, A, what happened to him and his, but B, the, the game you actually changed with like Cody in the team, him and his in the team, was that game and it lasted five minutes. And so still, we don't know if it ever would have worked or wouldn't have. Because to lose him and his is such a blow. You'd lose yeah. him one of the best strikers in the league, mate. Yeah. Defensively as well, Jimenez. He holds the ball up so well. Even yeah. from set pieces, like the way he got injured against Arsenal, we missed that now. We don't really have nobody attacking the front post. He's just See, all round set just all round well well class striker to me. So do you prefer it with a five because you're just so much more um because solid, we've just basically. got the personnel. We can't really afford we can play now we've got Johnny back, who might be a bit more settled than the left-hand side if you play the back four, but I wouldn't trust it because he, he always plays Cody, so, and we don't have Bolly. So then we'd be so, playing Cody and Sace together, and that's just asking for a trouble. Is Marcel injured? Or was he no, he's, he skits back now. Okay. Is he any good, Bradley? He's okay when he plays. He just gets plays two games, and he's out for like two months. Is he... Is he... Left sided centre back? Is he left back? Is yeah, he left he wing can back? Left I don't think anyone back. knows yet. Left centre back or wing back. I like he's he's okay. He's aggressive. Which is fine. Johnny will be really important for you though. And I know you oh, God, yeah, he's really top missed draw. him. You really rated yeah. him, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. To be to be fair, Bradley, you also rated Matt Doherty, and I can tell you were you were wrong about that one, mate. Don't no, tell me about Matt systems Doherty and shit. System. Oh, you take him back, mate. Honestly. <laughs> Do you want um, some Ado in the swap? Well, I would, that was going to be my next question. You don't rate him either, do you? <laughs> Some games, you like, you think, oh, is, is he going to turn a corner? And then the next time, like against Southampton, I mean, he got skimmed and then Den Donker Day helped him by closing down the cross. But he just got skimmed and he just stood there. Where your reaction should be to track back as soon as possible. He just sort of stood there and took it. He's quite passive, I think. He just sort of kind of like a shrug your shoulders, like there's no urgency to his defending. Yeah, I get that. There's certain things like I think the, the Pepe goal at Molyneux and uh, the, oh, that was the, embarrassing. The, the Aston Villa penalty right late yeah, in the game. They targeted as well. that all game. 
all game. They just let John McGinn run down that channel, saying he, w- he will give you something eventually. Yeah. From an FPL perspective, Brad, is this just a case of, even with a potential double coming up, is this just a case of, if you fancy Neto for a differential, great, otherwise ignore us? Neto or Nevers. Pretty much. Or Nevers, because of the pens and stuff. He's been yeah. he's been getting in the box a little bit recently as yeah, well. Yeah, he scored he? a goal in the box this season. I saw that. In open play. <laughs> and you lost still. Yeah, as you... <laughs> From a from a heading goal again. What price is Neves? Neves is five point one. So I mean, he's the sort of one that can can fill in potentially if you're looking to bench boost maybe in twenty six if that double happens for you, which would be Newcastle away and Manchester City away. At least against Manchester City, he's not going to lose points for goals conceded. Although mm. they never batter you anyway, mate. Um, <laughs> but and then you're potentially looking something from the Newcastle game. That's that's not the worst shout. And Neto, but Neto's only 0.6 more. You'd pay that, wouldn't you? Yeah, all day. Neto's got 34 more points than Ruben Nevers this season. How, how good is he, Brad? Well, Neto, class that is. In the make, he's world class in the making. So he's still only, what, 21? Is that right? 20. He's 20. He is top draw. When I, I was well with him last season briefly, and I thought, I said to you, he had a lot of potential, I thought, for FPL next season. But the way he's developed has been outstanding what, he just needed he... to build his strength which he has done this season what, like will, he, what will he what will he cost my Portuguese manager to buy a Portuguese player in the summer mate if if he wants to buy him he needs to be what Tottenham like, listen I've realised he's probably got greater ambitions higher. <laughs> <laughs> I've realised this but what would he what would he cost because this time last year we're talking about Traore as maybe 60 70 million and we wouldn't now no he's a better player than Traore way better but Trey, but Trey, he's still got that. I mean, you can't catch him if he goes. Can't catch him, but Neto will finish off things far more I consistently. That, that makes that. him worth a lot more. All right, then, Andy, who's the better player, Rafinha or Neto? Neto. Oh, I know, I know you're, you're dying to speak about Rafinha, so get on with it. I mean, honestly, like <laughs> Neto and Rafinha, Paul Bradley knows this as well. Like, they're the two favourite players this season. Like, they are so good, honestly. Like, yeah, Rafinha's Neto, class. Neto, Neto is world class, and he probably is worth like 100 million. I think he's that good. It's like brilliant. But um, someone's Rafinha, gonna clip that clip, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but Rafinha, I mean, I've turned into a, a fanboy account. I just, I have to stop myself from tweeting about Rafinha every like, every day. Like, otherwise, I just keep doing it. He's he's so good. He's so quick, direct, great touch, and then he's got Brazilian flair as well. Like Rafinha is just so good. He's incredible and. If we hold on to him for another season, I'll be so happy because all the big boys are sniffing around already. I know they are. I know from an FPL perspective, Andy, really we're talking Dallas is best defensively, Rafinha best in midfield, Bamford obviously best up front. It's, it's yeah. actually it's not too much to debate. We can we can talk about the things of it. But I want to give you an example. Let's say I was free hitting in game week 29. Uh, you've obviously got a double coming up now. Bradley's probably got a double coming up in 26. I don't need to worry about 29 because I'm free hitting there anyway. Why Why would I buy, bar being 0.4 cheaper, why would I buy Rafinha over Neto at the moment when Rafinha's got about 20 less FPL points than Neto? The way we play, how unlucky he's been. I think the points return doesn't match up to what he's actually producing on the pitch. I think he creates so much for Bamford as well as taking shots. I mean, he's had... Every game, there's always a, a shot that he has, and the keepers have made a, a world class save to deny him. And that's that's been most games. Always hit the woodwork, most games. And I think he's been lucky to get the points return that he's that he's had, even though he's still returning every game. I, I, I don't I don't think there's anyone better under six million in midfield than Rafinha, even if he's got single game weeks. Like, which, which one would you buy, Bradley? Uh, Rafinha. For the way Leeds play, it makes it more likely you'll get returns. All right, well, that sums that up. All right, and different, different question, Andy, if I can change you, because I, I like Harrison as well. So why is why is it obviously Rafinha over over Harrison then, if you were to invest there? Harrison's 0.1 more. Uh, Harrison has 16 more FPL points this season. Harrison's got 10 attacking returns to Rafinha's, also got 10. Rafinha's obviously had less minutes. I've enjoyed exactly right. yeah, yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but actually, there's not there's not too much between them. 
Why is it definitely Rafinha over Harrison? Yeah, I mean, as you say, I mean, I think Phillips, um, Harrison, sorry, has started, I think, 22 out of 23 games. Rafinha has only started 15 of our 23 games. Um, and he's, getting, he's closed, like, Rafinha for me is someone that plays more off Bamford and Harrison's more kind of your wide man who crosses it in. So the chances he's creating aren't as good as Raf- the chances that Rafinha's creating. And just from watching the games, Rafinha is someone that will have more touches in the box and, and should probably shoot more. And Rafinha, to clarify, the first start was game week nine. So it was obviously always catching up with Harrison a little bit. What did you what did you make him getting taken off at half time on Sunday? Well, I think it's pretty quiet in the first half. And I think just be able to just need to make a statement of saying, okay, this has not been good at all. Let's just give Robertson um Helder Costa a go. Like, here's your motivation, here's here's 45 minutes for you guys to prove yourself why we should start you. And I think Robertson Costa did pretty well in the second half. And then, and then and then and then that might put Harrison like, right, okay. I've been taken off at half time. I need to properly put it in now because it's maybe a starting place is under threat. But I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Oh, well, that's answered my next question. There's no threat there. Is there from, from no. Costa to Harrison? Is there? I don't think. Not at the moment, no. So a lot of people were looking at on the outside and go, right, Robertson and Harrison came on and um, Costa came on and obviously combined for the second goal really nicely, actually. But it, there's no threat to Harrison's place, is there? No. I mean, he's got a settled lineup. And I'd, I'm pretty sure at the moment Harrison is still there. It's first choice. Yeah. Bradley, can I ask it? Who are you intending to captain in FPL this coming week? Oh. Probably, probably Bruno again. It with the single, yeah? Yeah. Andy, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say Rafinha. I'll just answer that for you. Is that the plan? 100%. And <laughs> my only, my only decision, Bless you, mate. <laughs> my. <laughs> My only decision is triple captain. Am I like going to just take the plunge? I'm not doing that well in FPL. So do I just put it on my favourite player from this year in a double game week where the fixtures are pretty good? Do I go triple captain? I I think that's a relevant point because we spoke about this on Tuesday's podcast, the idea that if you're happy with your position at the moment, Bamford's quite a safe play for captain this week because the ownership's going to be massive. Whereas if you're in a chasing position, someone like Rafinha or Danny Ings is, is perhaps maybe the way to go. Is, is that the influence for you, Andy? Like, would you have that same opinion if you if you were in a position where you were looking to keep mini league rivals away from you rather than chase? Oh, completely. I'm I'm chasing. So if I was mm. sat with a 10k rank, I'd be captain Bamford all day long because his effective ownership is going to be well over 100 percent surely this week. So, but as someone that just needs to take a gamble and I'm. Yeah, why not, Rafinha? Well, I, 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 like, I don't. I don't think there's much difference in expected points returns between the two. But just because of Bamford's ownership, if you've protected rank, yeah, I've got to go, Bamford. Uh, just comparing the two, Rafinha points per game four point four, Bamford five point seven. That looks like a sizable difference. I, I think for myself, I, I would rather. As someone who's already got Bamford and is the only Leeds player that I currently own, I may well add Rafinha to that. I, I almost feel like if I don't stick the armband on him, because I think the effective ownership could be over 100%, I'm, I'm not sure for me if, if it's worthwhile even having him there. Surely I, I captain him, that will be a differential. And then if I've got Rafinha as well, because his ownership is so low... That's, that's a differential as well. He, itself, he's yeah. also still a differential, right? Yeah. So th- that's the way I'm thinking of playing it at the moment. I, t- I, I just think... I know Rafinha... I think he's like three and a half percent owned at the moment. Yeah, I think it'd be, I think it'd be ten percent, um, maybe the deadline. But then, if you look for people that are going to be higher, like in the top ten k, I think his ownership could be twenty five, thirty percent. So it won't be too much of a differential. If Come you just- currently, oh, yeah. he's got two hundred and seventeen thousand owners. So I mean, to get up to ten percent, he probably needs to treble that. I, I can't I can't see that happening, Andy. So I think the most he'd get up to is sort of six, seven percent ownership by deadline, I think. And I think okay. a lot of people's priority would still be Bamford. It's gonna be people out there who don't own him and are now gonna be scared for this week, yeah. I think. Yeah. So yeah. um talk to me about your new forward, if you can, Bradley. Joe say. Not 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 the one I don't like, but the one you <laughs> might like. Or do, do you dislike your one as well? What what's your uh, thoughts on him, William Joe say? It's done. 
done okay. He's, he's a bit stronger. He's a bit more experienced. And he links the player a bit better, which is just what we need. I he has the benefit sure of being more like him and his in style, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm not sure if they'll buy him. If Raul becomes fit, like, he should be fit, hopefully, at some point this season. I'm not sure they'd buy him. I'm not well, sure. There's, there's no timeline on him and his yet, is there? No, the last thing Nino said is had fantastic results. And Raul himself is posting, like, he's working pretty hard in the gym and stuff. So, it, they're pretty optimistic on him for this season. I think he'd be late, though. I think he'd be, like, April. Yeah, I think, I mean, look, the, the, the main thing is that he makes a recovery and plays football again, full stop, is obviously the most important thing. And and thoughts on Fabio Silva, because depending on which Wolves fan I speak to, I seem to get a very different answers on the fella. 5.2 forward, he's obviously not playing at the moment. But what do you think of him as a player, what you've seen so far? Because, I mean, he's obviously he's young. I think he's still 18. You spent a fortune on the lad, though. And I think there were some expectations that if you have to do without Jimenez for a bit, he'll be ready to come in and play. Thoughts? I think he's all right. I think he's just a kid. You know, it is upper body strength that needs to work on, but that comes with time. This time last season, there was Wolves fans saying Neto, like what we brought him for. People don't have any patience. It's just because of his price tag. It, that's not his fault. Well, Against West Brom, he was the only player that match that turned up and put his self about. And the way he took his goal showed his ability. He's got good movement. He just lacks pace. Fans of every club always want yesterday. There's another player who's just looking through your squad who I know you're quite an admirer of. 0.0% owned. Do you know who that player is, Bradley? Patinia. Talk to me about him. Why doesn't he play more? Because I know you really rate him, don't you? From what I've seen, the way it's the way he turns on the ball and receives it, which is something a lot of our midfielders are incapable of doing in tight areas. Uh, probably because of his size, I imagine, at the minute. And I think because we're struggling, so he's not he's going to get to tried and trusted rather yeah, than... Yeah, get that. I, I like him. That. But I'm, again, I'm not sure if they'll spend the money now in the summer on him. I would personally, if they're going to actually commit to evolving. I've seen a no, I've seen more in him to persevere with him than like... I mean, we've played Gibbs White about how many games he's played for Wolves. Probably over 50. And I've not been... He's not really ever convinced for Wolves. It, it feels like your midfield's had a big drop-off this year in terms of just what people's acceptance of what you are. And I know that Matinho's ageing a bit. It also feels to me a little bit like, I know you, you kind of highlight Neves as a possible, but it feels like he hasn't kicked on the way we expected. He's another one who it felt like two years ago we're talking 60, 70 million. And I'm not sure anybody would, would come and pay the money at the moment because I don't... <laughs> I, I, I don't... I know you like him, but he doesn't he doesn't get round the pitch enough. And it's another reason why I think you're more suited to the five where Neves and Matinho can see the game in front of them. And also, if you play it with a three, then Donker basically does the legs work for him, doesn't he? He's always the one that, that breaks into the box and stuff. Has he had a particular drop off this year, Neves, or is it a kind of a knock on effect that Matinho can't play in quite I the think, same way as when he arrived? I think it's a knock on effect of the team. I think if you put Neves in a team where the players around him are at his level, he's going to stand out. He's still a top draw footballer. He's really stepped up this start of this calendar year. He's our vice captain as well now, and he's pretty took it seriously. His performance is standing out, taking responsibility as well now. Are you worried in a game like this, though, when you know you're going to come up the team again, he's going to run for 90 minutes? Does that alone worry you? Or do you just think, no. actually, this is the sort of game where we can exploit them themselves on the counter-attack? Yeah. I imagine... I mean, we, we're used to sitting in deep anyway. I'm used to that. Do you enjoy that? Because I find it tough to watch with my team. Uh, no. No. Um, it's okay if they have the intent to actually press at the right times, but most of the times this season, then literally stand off. Stand off to the point of being really pathetic. They're literally saying beat us. Again, say Hampton in the second it, half, they I mean, pressed it, with intent. But there was it, no engagement at all in the first half. It was ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. None, none at all. 
um, which is interesting because I know Suj particularly always used to speak so highly about the way you kind of you press at the right times off the ball. You, and I think that's a real problem as well. Drop well, off. possibly, yeah. Experience at the front in terms of knowing when to set it off because he himself, he has moments where he, he, he kind of looks a bit laboured and lazy sometimes in games. And then you have him and Jimenez get into a block with a, a, a Podence is obviously another player you're missing at the moment. Has he got any chance of returning, Bradley, Podence? Uh, no, no, no. Probably back in March. He's made of poppadoms as well, it seems. <laughs> Look, with Mark Al, just snap at the slightest twinge. You've got a few of them as well, haven't you, Andy? Pop Plenty of those, those yeah. <laughs> I mean, Lorente steps on the pitch and he gets injured. Bless him. He's been, he's been rushed back too much when he's come back, I think. Yeah. Isn't he? It's just because we need him so much and he is getting rushed back a lot. And hopefully this time he'll get back to 100% and we can seriously start playing him every game. So, but I mean, some, that's our biggest problem, centre-back. So we get a couple of guys fit and I think we'll push on again. Rodrigo's been a miss too, isn't he? Yeah, he's in training though today. So oh, okay. To so he's got a chance, has he? He has got a chance. Yeah, I don't know if it's full training, but um, he put on his Instagram. He's he's back in training. So and uh, so is Pavedo as well. So there's a few options hopefully. That could be interesting, Rodrigo. Five point seven um, at this particular time, where people may be looking to move off an Antonio or a Calvert Lewin straight into the double. Another big differential, sort of three percent owned. The, he's the in thing- my team. He's in my team at the moment. Oh, you still so. got him, have you? Yeah, well, I had my game week 16 wildcard and I couldn't just stretch to Bamford. So I got Rodrigo in ahead of the double with Southampton. Uh, now we know why you're captain Rafinha. You ain't got Bamford. I got Bamford. You <laughs> have you not got the old bloody game's got Bamford? You're my Leeds correspondent. Why haven't you got him? Yeah, I mean, was, I just had other other issues. I mean, I did the wild card and then I didn't have any City players because they didn't double and then the fixtures got changed around and other issues. But um, yeah, but now it's gone full circle and Rodrigo's back. So I might just keep him if he's fit. Yeah, that, that could be a really interesting one. The thing is, I, I feel like with your players as well, Andy, that when they're fit, they will just go straight in. And yeah. there's no... The, the, one of the things that really makes... It kind of goes for yourself, Bradley, is that we know we're not going to have to worry too much about rotation with your teams. Like, How much I, to pick from, is there? Well, <laughs> to be honest, no, that kind of goes for both of you at the moment because of injuries in, in departments for both of you. I'm just looking through Bamford's minutes through the season, Andy. At, at 59 minutes against... Newcastle in game week 20. Did he come off with an injury? I can't quite recall. Um, no, I don't I, think it was an injury. I think it was tired. It was a part of the season where there's a lot of games and he just brought him off to rest him. I, think. I mean, that's the first time he'd been withdrawn prior to basically 69 minutes since game week one against uh, Liverpool. We started every game. That's helpful, isn't it? When you know you want to put a captain yeah. seat on someone for a for a double a double game week, yeah, abs- absolutely. Exactly. I mean, yeah, Bamford and Rafinha, you can near enough say they're going to play 180 minutes in this double. That's that's the good thing. It, yeah, I I definitely get that appeal. Um, and just a word for Dallas, uh, Andy. Do you own him? I am going to get him. <laughs> he ain't got <laughs> him either. I'm going. I've got one. I've got, one, I've got two Leeds players, Rafinha and Rodrigo. Um, Dallas is definitely my transfer because I still got I've got Robertson, so um, I'll be going Robertson to Dallas. And, Andy, week. I want to see that tweet later, which will be obviously before this goes out on Thursday. We should clarify just in case anyone gets injured. We are pre-recording this on Tuesday. I want to see that tweet, Andy, that says I've been shit at FPL this year because I haven't bought enough Leeds players. I, I, I can tweet that if you want. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got Dallas or Bamford. No, but I, I had. I, I can't I had believe Dallas. it, mate. <laughs> I had Dallas. I had Dallas and then I had to bring in a Man City defender and I thought I'm going to keep this Liverpool double at the back so I kept Trent and Robertson still still believing that they could turn the corner even up to this week I was thinking <laughs> Andy I'm you're the take... only person I know who's stuck on that longer than me mate honestly. I know I know and <laughs> even, even, even this week even this week it was like Robertson to me for a minus four that doesn't make sense does it I know it's Leicester but for a minus four it doesn't make sense I don't know I'm going to keep I'm going to keep I'm going to keep Robertson and Trent for again, and that was just another mistake. So, um, Robertson to Dallas is done for this week, definitely. Nice. What's What's the hopes from here for for yourself, Andy, for the season? Um, do you get frustrated when people keep saying, "Oh, that bad record against big six teams and stuff like?" Was before you beat Leicester? I mean, it seemed a bit ridiculous for a promoted team. Is it just because you're Leeds United that you're getting compared like that? Or yeah, have you not been a big six team like? You match Man City. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, 
my my hopes have just been exactly what I'd hoped we'd do is com- complete safety, mid table mediocrity, and build again for next season. Like it's just gone gone to plan, and I just enjoyed every game. And the the one thing that has annoyed me, I mentioned this as well, is I thought at the start of the season we'd get we'd win possession in every single game. And the game, probably one of the best performances of the season was against Leicester. We beat them 3-1. That's the only game we didn't win possession. It was 41, 49-51. And I was like, oh, shame. That's interesting you mentioned that particular game because I think what happened there is Le- Leicester switched system in the second half and went to a three at the back. And I think it, it threw the whole man-to-man yeah. thing out a little bit. Into, I'm not sure what we're doing here. And actually, very rarely for you, it seems to be a little bit of restraint in... Should we, we should we sit we up till off. we work we out what's off. happening? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's brilliant to see like why we can actually change it. Like Leicester have come at us and we we sat off and think we can count. Okay, brilliant. But nice. is it coincidental that you won that game then? I think it was good finishing that game. Um, but yeah, it just, it just goals worked. unreal. Yeah, it, it, it works so well. <laughs> you, he you pulls imagine... out some great goals sometimes. Do, it's two against have... Villa as well. Yeah. Do you ever have some thoughts, Andy, that late in the game you're winning by one and you think, oh, like, to be honest, even Palace the, the other night, I know it was more likely to go sort of three or four than go 2 1, but you have moments like the pullback and Eze blazed it over at 2 0 and there's 20 minutes to go and suddenly it could be a different game. You sometimes think, Shh, these lot ain't that good. <laughs> like, if, if we just if we just calm down a little bit, this game's <laughs> in the bag. Do, do you ever feel like that or is it just a case no. of I enjoy it so much and the pressure is off because the points you've got particularly as well that just exactly. enjoy it? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the season and I enjoy just just us going for it. I don't, I don't want to see us sit back and, like, absorb pressure. I don't want to see that. It's just, just go for it. Just play how we're doing. We're getting the points on the board. Okay, we lose games 4-2. 6-2 against Man U, um, which wasn't a 6-2 game in my eyes. But um, we'll lose games, but then we'll win games. Like, it's, it's great to watch. And if we keep building and get a better squad, then brilliant. Long may it continue. Yeah. I'm going to give you your most difficult question, Andy. What's the easier game, Friday night against Wolves or Tuesday against Southampton? Tuesday against Southampton is the easiest game. Is that just because Bradley's here? No, I think it's going to be another tough watch. I would have loved it if you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then yeah, so yeah. yeah. Uh, go on, tell us, tell us why, because we haven't spoke about Southampton, and that is kind of important to reference, because there's been plenty looking to go Southampton players because they've got yourselves as, as the second part of Southampton, oh, compl- yeah, rather completely, than playing yeah. Chelsea, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. um, why, why do you think Southampton is more likely to be the better game for you of the two? I think they'll play a higher line. I think they'll come on to us a lot more. I think it's going to be more like a basketball match than it will be against Wolves. Mm. So for me, I can see like a, a really high scoring game against Southampton. Hopefully we're the better side of it and can finish our chances. Um, against Wolves, it's going to be a tough watch. I think it's one goal to nick it either way because I can't see Wolves changing. I think we'll have majority of the ball, but then just won't be able to break them down because Nuno should go five in the back and make it really difficult. And I don't think Wolves have got that striker that can hurt us and they won't press us that high. So, yeah. Is that all fair, Bradley? Disagree with any of that? Yeah. We'll probably sit back. Just our default setting, it seems, at the start of the match. I think it will be a back five, won't it? Definitely against Yeah, I'll be shocked if it's Friday. not. Yeah, I, it'd, be, I it'd, be, it'd be interesting, well. it'd be interesting if, we, if we do score really early. I wonder if Wolves will then come out. But if it's, it's likely to be nil at half-time and then one goal decided, right? Way, well, Wolves won't start playing until minute 46, mate. Yeah, you, exactly. You, you already know that. So if you can get the game finished early enough, or like I said at the start, the trick is don't score and just leave with a nil-nil, mate, is another possibility. I was just looking, Bradley, you're, you're 10 points behind Liverpool. <laughs> That's quite funny <laughs> to think of. <laughs> That's astonishing, isn't it? Yeah. I don't even know that. That's... So can you... And that's that same game's played as well. Can you still qualify for Europe? Because no. I, I know I know you're twelfth in the league, but that's you're you're, you're twelve points away from uh, Chelsea, who are fourth, and you're twelve points clear of Fulham, who are eighteenth. It would take some doing. Now you don't need to finish fourth to. There's every chance Europa League places will go down to seventh potentially. Is it definitely off the table? 
And the same would apply to yourself, Andy. I mean, you're you're two points clear of Bradley's team and with a game in hand as well, which is <laughs> not, obviously on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm not talking about Europe. Dude. I'm not, I'm not talking about Europe. I'm Why not, mate? The table. Yeah, if it happens, it happens. But I don't expect anything other than... If you can finish 10th, brilliant. But I can't see it. Are you worried about Nuno's future, Bradley? Uh, I was, especially after the Derby loss. When they lost that match, I... I text text my uncle after us, so I think he's going to go after that match, look like Mick McCarthy did when he lost to West Brom. But I think he's kept his job for now. It's, there's got to be something, a big sort out in the summer, but where this club's actually going, with how they actually want to play. Are, are you happy with him? Because I, I, for the first time, I know you love him, for the first time I can sense a little bit of doubt in you in terms of where this is going next, I think. I haven't liked the first. I mean, we used to play with no fear. We used to take on any team like Man City. I mean, we'd sit deep, but there's always the intent that we're just waiting to pence. Then it just seems like they're just sitting deep to, oh, if we don't, we might get a draw. That's fine. That sort of thing annoys me. I don't know why that's changed at the moment. I hope it comes. I mean, did you see his reaction at the end of the Southampton match? Yeah. The way he was hugged, that looked like it was quite big to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, some, I got that something. opinion as well. I think, I think even the way players the celebrate thing. with each other, I think I think it's difficult to put it on one player's injury, but I really think that him and his injury is so destabilising that almost I look at your results for this season and all the jokes about not scoring first and almost think, well, oh, forget that, we'll come back again next year. And you might be better, you might not be. But I, I, I don't... I almost feel like he's been so important to you. And even the way you have to remember as well, in terms of comparing to last season, it's not just Jimenez, is it? It's Jota as well, right? Yeah, that's so, a big problem. So the, the, teams, as well, Jota. the team's had a big change. Johnny's been injured all season. You sold Doherty. Suddenly you've changed like a third of the team, which will, it, I joke about Doherty, but Doherty and Johnny were important components in terms of how you played. Yeah, no doubt him. about it. And the replacements in that area have been weaker as well. And I, I, I think that's destabilised you as well, mate. Yeah, um, we need to buy two centre backs in the summer, at least. Uh, to, well, I'll to, be, to, I'll to, be to, fighting um, you for him. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, to me as well, like Nuno just just doesn't seem happy. Like yeah. last season, he seemed a lot happier. It's like he's, I haven't seen him smile for weeks. Yeah, I think his family's stuck in Portugal, but he said himself, I think that it's. It's the same for a lot of people, so he's not going to hide behind it. Okay. I think I think we're a club that misses a crowd as well. I don't I think they'd be getting that. away with it at Molyneux if they were sitting like that against, like, I don't know, Newcastle or whatever. That match was depressing. I agree with that. I mean, everybody probably, bar Tottenham fans, probably thinks that they're, <laughs> they're, 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 well, we'd all be booing, Andy. <laughs> everybody thinks that their club would be West in a better Ham. position with fans. Uh, to be honest, West Ham. Yeah, maybe West Ham, because, uh, oh, listen, don't get me started on that bunch anyway, especially this week when we're about <laughs> to play them on Sunday. But for the majority of clubs, I'm sure it's the same for you as well, Andy. You've had better results away from home largely compared yeah. to home I know the pitch has kind of been oh. a factor in that as well which uh, that's gone now so we don't need to get on that but Patrick Bamford's got his rugby boots on and everything's <laughs> okay and well now um, but I'm sure you feel the same if you had that crowd and it'd be does, rocking you look, he's like first season back in the Premier League you, Ellen Road would be absolutely you look mental. through yeah. most of the teams and you think I'm looking through anything you know even like Palace even like West Brom and Sheffield United they'd, they'd probably be on more points if they had a crowd there and stuff so everybody's in that boat. And obviously it's, it's well known. Eight uh, more away wins than home wins this season. Thanks very much, lads. Wish you both very best of luck. Um, Cheers. Bradley, Neto or no one, basically, yeah? Neto or no one, yeah. Pretty and much. Andy, buy the Leeds players that you ain't got, yeah? Yeah, I'm shit at <laughs> FPL. <laughs> <Don't>... <laughs> Dallas. We love um, you, mate. For, yeah, for, for what it's worth, I think Rafinha TC for you isn't Oh, it's the right thing. You know do, what? Right? You know what? I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to put the put the oh, on it. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now. Go on. I'll do it. I've got two it's days done. where I can edit this, Andy. Are you sure, mate? <laughs> it's done. See, I'm go- I'm just going to enjoy it. It's like Friday night game, finish work, get the beers out, put the TC on Rafinha. And watch us no. depressingly getting like. I was like, going <laughs> to say. And I'll be nervous. I'll, I'll nervous miss it. I'll go to bed. <laughs> 
Right, let's do predictions then. Bradley, <laughs> Friday night, Wolves v Leeds. Correct score, please. Oh. You know what? Same at Ellen Road, 1 0. To yourselves? Yeah. And enter attack goal. Um, I'll say 2 1 to Leeds. And for Tuesday against Southampton? 3 0. <laughs> Good lad. Uh, any thoughts on that game, Bradley? Lead Southampton. Go neutral. Goal fest. Yeah. Ings and Bamf. It, it basically come down to it's not as clinical. I think. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll have Ings probably. Yeah. I'll have Ings as have, well. So. Have both, isn't it? And any yeah. and anybody who's got Ings, Bamford, Rafinha should probably have something to look forward to this week, shouldn't they? I think I'll have Ings this week. Definitely. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm I've got Ings as well. So. Yep. I can see me going down a similar route. I will say, I don't think Leeds will get beat Friday, but I think it's a, I think it's a close call. Um, if I had to edge for it, I'd actually go for yourselves, Andy, on Friday night. Um, but I think I'll go draw 1-1. And I think that Southampton might beat you, actually. Um, but I think it could be a mad one, maybe three, <laughs> for like 3-2, three, similar, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends if Danny Ings is clinical and if it is, then it could be mad, so, yeah. You're difficult to predict, Andy. Um, yeah, I, I just enough. feel like one of the things I spoke about on Tuesday was this movement thing, and I, I think Wolves haven't got the players that will trouble you with that, whereas actually Southampton might. Yeah. Um, and that's part of my thinking on that. But Southampton more likely to just shove it over the top as well and see deal with it. Well, to be honest, they, they, that, that's why Carl Walker Peters missing is quite a blow for them because they like that from similar to what Trent does for Liverpool, that ball in from sort of right back over the, the left centre halves and and so. Um, which that's kind of been a problem position for you, hasn't it, Bradley? So, <laughs> yeah, Alvio, just chip it over Samado's head. I've never seen a ball go over a bloke's head so much in my life. <laughs> Fortunately, you just mean, got you just got rid of Southampton and don't have to worry about it again, mate. Yeah, I mean, if Phillips is back, it makes a huge difference. So, yes, yeah, it, it, it should, it should oh, be back. So. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I, I go with the caveat of that. I, actually, it, I could if Cal- Calvin Phillips is not back, I wouldn't be surprised if he lost both games, Andy. Yeah, I mean, the thing is as well. I don't know if you heard today about his um, his nan. He's no. really close to his nan, and she's she's quite ill. So okay, mm. it's, it's it's possibly more of a doubt. So let's see. Yeah. All right, we'll keep an eye on team news, guys. You can follow Bradley on Twitter at Parker underscore Bradley. You can follow Andy FPL Tactician. Is there an underscore Andy? There is, isn't it? FPL, uh, it's underscore, FPL underscore, underscore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good man. Thanks very much. I don't know what next week's COTC is going to be yet. I know what I want it to be. But at the time of recording, I'm still waiting for fixtures. So I ain't saying anything more than that. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be streaming twice, 9 a.m. for my Ash James stream. And again, at 5.30, ahead of the deadline, before we all go to sleep, before Wolves play Leeds afterwards. And then get to sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley, Andy, thanks very much. Andy, I look forward to that picture of Rafinha, triple captain. Good luck for the game weeks, guys. Cue music, please, man, Charles.